Hey, what's up guys, it's Dorian. Today I'm gonna to be having a look at OpenSUSE Leap 15.0 Beta. As always, like, subscribe, and share, and you can also follow me over on the Twitter at Dorian.slash. So I talked about OpenSUSE before, I did a Leap video before, in case you're not up to date. Tumbleweed is one version, Leap is another. Tumbleweed is a rolling release, so they come out with snapshots automatically when their QA process runs, and you're gonna be constantly getting updates. You'll always have the newest software on that. Some people like it, some people dislike it for stability reasons. For that reason, you have Leap, and Leap is a fixed release. The last version that came out was 42.3. So their fixed releases are supported for 36 months. So that would be 4142. And then their minor release, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 are, are released annually. That's the plan. And you might be wondering, why am I reviewing then Leap 15? Well, Leap 15, the version, is so that they line up with SUSE SLE, the SUSE Linux Enterprise and that's what runs on the servers, that's what corporations use, and OpenSUSE kind of has three things going on. They have the Tumbleweed, they have the Leap, and the SLE. So their OpenSUSE is like a testing ground, I guess, to get users on board, trying, testing, fixing, and then these versions will come out into SLE for Enterprise as a nice, stable, and thoroughly tested version. Right now their schedule is February was the beta phase, April 24th is their release candidate, that's next week on uh, Tuesday. So that's their release candidate phase and their package freeze, and then May 14th is their final submission where it's going to be all the last minute roll-ups, last minute updates for all the packages, and end of May will be a re the actual release, but there's no date for that right now. So let's have a look at OpenSUSE. So we have your grub menu here, boot up, advanced options for your different kernels, and start bootloader from a read-only snapshot. Now I've talked before about the different snapshots that you can boot up from and recover. These snapshots are things that you could do automatically or manually so if you're going to make a big change to your system you're going to try to install a big driver you could do a, a snapshot I, I discussed that before in my last leap video so i'm not going to go over that too much i'm just going to boot right in here now i did have a couple of issues which i did get on video i'm probably going to insert them here somehow and the problem was it wouldn't boot up it was freezing i was getting some weird glitching and I couldn't actually get a graphical target and I had to disable the 3D acceleration in VirtualBox for it to work. Now I know there's been a lot of issues with VirtualBox drivers. The whole, I, I keep rehashing this, the whole Spectre, the whole meltdown thing. It was a nightmare. Virtual machine stopped working. The, there was incompatibilities between the guest editions. It was a mess. But anyways, here we are. It's GNOME, of course. I'm a GNOME lover. And I found by default, if you click the little gear, it was GNOME and not GNOME on Xorg. This means you're going to run it on Wayland. I prefer Xorg. It records better. You get better visual effects that you don't get in Wayland because Wayland is stable. It's good. It's pretty new. It doesn't have good screen recording software doesn't do the window snapping effects, which I can show you. Or maybe not, I don't, I don't know how well it'll work in a virtual machine. Okay, so here we are at the desktop. I dig the wallpaper. I don't know if it's because this is a beta, so you know, it's got like blueprints and whatnot on the side here. Pretty neat. First things first, GNOME itself. Have a look over here. You can already tell by the side screen that it is a newer version, 3.26.2. I think Ubuntu 18.04 is using 3.28. So that's good. It's using a much newer version here. And if we pop open the terminal and I make this bigger, 
and we do one of these, you can see that it's using kernel 4.12.14, which is a little odd to me that they're using 4.12. I'm sure updates will come, but when you think that Ubuntu 16.04 was using kernel 4.13, it's slightly behind. And if you look at Ubuntu 18.04, it's using 4.15. And a lot of the newer distros, in fact, are using 4.15. I'm not just comparing straight to Ubuntu because you can't just compare one to the other. However, I will point out a website which I'm going to put in the description. I'm sure some of you have seen it before, Pharonix. They do a lot of hardware benchmarks and everything, and they put Leap 15 through its paces. So you can go here and you can see all the benchmarks. It was in the mid to upper for all tests, but it always seemed to be slightly behind Ubuntu for most cases, which makes sense because Ubuntu's newer kernel. So I'll leave the link in the description and you can go and check all that out and see all that for yourself. So software, included software, still Firefox, and of course it is the, should be, the Quantum 59.0.2. Evolution for mail, music, LibreOffice, files, still using Nautilus or GNOME files if you want. Not a big fan of them keeping the ugly default GNOME icons maybe they'll spruce it up this is after all still a beta keep that in mind as well throughout all this this is a beta and it's not the finished product tweak tools comes with so of course as you can see i use an extension right away i download a dash to dock because otherwise you end up with nothing and you have to do this to get it which i don't like so first thing i always do install dash to dock. We've got LibreOffice 6. So that's nice. Brand new LibreOffice version. We've got the OpenSUSE distros come with a lot of tools that you would use in enterprise and in servers. So of course, you're going to get stuff that you're probably never going to use yourself, but it's there if you want to. This, which I could not figure out at first till I realized, oh, it's ACL, Access Control Lists, lets you play around with that. So this is a lot of stuff, again, maybe the average user won't want to play with. Comes with GIMP, the latest 2.8, yes, very nice. A Gnote, Lagno play a game it comes with a couple of games handy that uh, lights off is another game mahjong another game minesweeper maps mutt now i found this odd that mutt came with open susa especially considering it already comes with evolution mutt is a terminal based mail client pigeon your chat client irc client another game your settings, which is your GNOME settings, which we looked at before. More games, Software Center, Tiger VNC Viewer, which is awesome. Always nice to have a VNC Viewer out of the box. And some Sundry, Ice T, Econf, Print Settings, Utilities, the usual, Archiver, Deja Dupe, Remote Desktop, Events, the usual. Just gonna skim through that. So let's look at YAS now because that is the, probably the most important thing, the coolest thing about OpenSUSE. This control center has a lot and I went over it before. I had issues with it in previous versions. I'm hoping this goes smooth now. And this is where you can access Snapper for your snapshots. It's you do have to have a BTRFS file system, so when you're installing it, make sure you choose BTRFS as your file system so that you can use this. Otherwise, you won't be able to have your snapshots here. So this is where you, 
you would show changes and just bring this up here show changes you can see which files were changed and you could pick this at the very top so it'll select everything underneath and restore so yeah I've discussed that before uh, app armor configuration system log system journal um, things that you could find manually but it's nice to have this stuff here as this is a distro which is meant to be enterprise level in the end you're gonna get a lot of network things your windows domain membership iSCSI initiator NFS clients mail service LDAP and Kerberos all these things where your average user isn't going to use but again remember that people will use this in enterprise so all this stuff is super handy you may never touch it yourself but that's fine and then you've got your partitioner bootloader bootloader is useful if you want to add and remove kernel parameters change bootloader options etc you can of course still go into the terminal and edit your grub file, update grub, and all that, but this is just a nice GUI way of doing things. And then of course if you want to update your system, you load up the online updater, it's going to check online and show you your available updates. I think I have something else open. Do I have the software center open? Yes. So you can't have the software center open and the updater at the same time. There we go, that was super fast. So this is your this is your GUI updater, your system updates will show up here. But learn how to use zipper. Yeah. I should learn how to use zipper. So this will update your repositories, and if you want to update, you're going to do DUP and it's going to update your packages for you. New packages available, five new packages are gonna be upgraded, 2.6 megabyte download, not too bad at all, but I don't want to do that right now. So, OpenSUSE Leap 15 beta, looks good so far. I'm anxious to try the full release when it comes out at the end of May. I'm curious if they're going to update the kernel and if they're going to do any updates on a bit of customization here because it's very very plain gnome everything's the Adwaita theme plain icons but that's okay I kind of want to install it on hardware just to see if I can get the Nvidia drivers up and running but I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do that or not just because it's a beta although the final release is a little ways away I might do that and just see if any bugs pop up, any major problems. There's not a lot of updates right now, as you saw when I did the zipper dupe command. So maybe I'll wait and see on that. So Leap 15, so far so good. Subscribe if you want to see uh, if I install it on hardware. I probably will. I know I'm saying that I'm, I'm nervous to try it, but I'm probably going to do it and hopefully I don't destroy my computer. All right, well, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, guys, bash on.